stuck around. I am Bob the Canadian and I am trying to do a live stream from the farm and it is super fun this evening that I can uh, do this. I hope, really hope that it's working this time. I have made some adjustments to my internet and I'm just crossing my fingers that some of you have stuck around, stuck around. and you are able, I am Bob the Canadian, and I am able to come and watch this live lesson. I really hope that I fixed everything. Um, so I'll just start as normal. Hi, I am Bob the Canadian. Um, it was raining outside earlier, so I quickly set up in a different location, but I think I was too far away from my access point. And I think now maybe I have everything working. I'm very excited that it seems like things are working and I hope many of you will join me this evening still. Sorry for the delay, but you know, even when things go wrong, you can learn a little bit of English. So we had technical difficulties. I had a problem with my Wi-Fi. Um, thank you for being patient during the delay, but hey, we should get started. Um, let me check if there are any questions. I know there were English questions rolling in. Uh, I'll start with Lolly's. Uh, her question is about, let me get over here. Um, Lolly says, hi, Bob, could you please pronounce <laughs> these words properly? So first of all, you can get law, the desert, is hot okay so that's the noun the next one is um oh uh he lives on a desert island that's the next version the next one is sometimes sometimes people desert the army so if you're a deserter you leave it and then my kids really like dessert I hope, Lolly, I hope I got all of those right. Um, again, thank you to all of you who waited patiently through the technical difficulties and didn't desert me. So do you see that? I use the word desert um, as an example and I'm glad that you didn't desert me. Uh, I hope you enjoy the uh, setting I'm in. I am in the upstairs of my barn. This is called the haymow or the hayloft. Um, there's hay over there. I got my nice big light up. I got another light over here and I hope that this will work uh, when the weather is bad for the next little while. But thank you so much for coming. Um, I hope Todd's here. I think Todd is back. Uh, Todd is a very patient person. He doesn't often desert me. So that's really nice. Let's get to the next question. Renata says, your Good evening, Bob. Good evening, Renata. Bob, your video about food at the restaurants was awesome. Thank you very much. If you haven't seen that video yet, I will put a link up here, one of these sides uh, on the replay, um, or you can go back and watch it. I went to four restaurants, um, but Renata says, what's a rewards card? So I don't have my wallet on me, but I would show you. Um, a rewards card is a card the restaurant gives you, and each time you buy something, they scan it and they give you points. And then once you have enough points, you can redeem those points for free food. So I have a Tim Hortons rewards card from the Tim Hortons restaurant. Uh, and I can go and I can buy things and I get points. And then when I have enough points, I get something for free. Actually, the other day I got a cookie for free. That was really fun. Anyways, I'm just gonna stop and say thank you to the 127 people who are here to watch. You guys are awesome. If you have questions, Todd will be posting the link from time to time in the chat, and I will be happy to help. Uh, Ulysses says, hi, Bob, always good to see your videos. What's the difference between the words can, may, might, and could? I usually use can for everything. For example, can you help me? So they're different in the sense of politeness sometimes. So for instance, uh, when I was a kid, I would say to my dad, can I have a cookie? And he would say, no, you need to say, may I have a cookie? Um, so they mean the same thing, but when you use may in that situation, it's a little more polite. Um, and then might and could are simply, you know, um, I could have canceled the live stream, but I didn't. So it's a conditional kind of thing, right? I could have, but I didn't. Um, and then might is, 
um, I might have disappointed people. So there was a possibility that I would have disappointed people. I'm glad I didn't. So let's move to the next question. Renata says, oh, this is a good one too. This is related uh, to the video the other day. What's a foot long bread? It's actually a foot long sub. So a foot long sub is a kind of sandwich and it's 12 inches long. So it is a foot long. I know most of our countries use the metric system. So we use centimeters and meters. Um, but in Canada, we still use both systems for measurement. Um, so a foot long sub is 12 inches long. And you can also order a six inch sub, which is half the length. So foot long. So it is a foot long. That's where the name comes from. Um, again, people, Todd will post the link for questions. I will try to get to most of them. Um, Lolly has the next question. Lolly says, hi, Bob. Could you explain the expression taken for granted? Thank you. So parents are often taken for granted. And what that means is they do a lot for their kids. They buy groceries, they feed their kids. Uh, and sometimes their kids don't say thank you. Um, so parents sometimes feel like they are taken for granted. Uh, it means that your children just expect you to do all these things. Sometimes I think they think it happens through magic, that food magically appears. Um, but when you are taken for granted, it means you're doing something for someone regularly um, and they rarely say thank you. They just expect you to do it all the time. So um, I think when I was a kid, I took my parents for granted. Um, and later in life, I really appreciated them. I think when you get older, you appreciate your parents more. Um, let's see here. Henry from Taiwan says, hi, Henry, by the way. Um, hi, Bob, in the restaurant video, what does tea, peppermint tea black mean, like black coffee? Yes. So um, by the way, I love your field trip English lessons and support your always for creating videos. Thank you, Henry. So yes, um, you can order your tea black, I think because Tim Hortons is a cafe, it is a coffee-based restaurant, they use some of the coffee terms for tea as well. Um, and because Canada was originally uh, part of Britain or the United Kingdom um, a long time ago, I might have my history wrong with the names, but um, oftentimes we drink our tea with a little bit of milk in it. Um, that's very common. A lot of people still drink tea with a little bit of milk in it. So when you order your tea black, it means that you don't want milk and you don't want cream in it. So Jen likes her peppermint tea black. Um, I like my tea uh, with a little bit of sugar. Um, I do like it with almond milk sometimes. I'm not sure if you all have almond milk. Anyways, next question. Here we go. Let's see here. Um... Claude Mir says, hello, Bob. Hello, Claude Mir. Uh, can we use the verbs give and receive to refer to education? For example, the education that I have received from my dad. Yes, so you can use, you can receive an education, definitely. Um, to give an education is a little bit different. I'm trying to think like a school, some schools give a really good education. Some schools are known for giving a good education, but I don't know if that's, totally the way we would say it, but receive is definitely a word you would use when talking about education. You would say, you know, when I went to this university, I received an excellent education. So um, let's see here. Oh, Samuel has a question. Hi, Samuel. How are you? I'm just going to adjust my chair here a little bit. Um, Samuel says, what verb tenses can I combine to write a story? So here's what I would tell you. The simplest way to write a story is to write all of, their, all of the narration and description in the past tense and write all of the dialogue in the present tense. So here's a really quick example. The other day, Joe went to town Joe wanted to buy a coffee. Joe drove his car to town. When he got to the restaurant, he said to the, um, he said to the person taking his order, um, please give me. So write all of your description in the past tense and write your dialogue in the present tense. That's the simplest way, I think, uh, to write a story. Wendy from Nicaragua says, do you know Niagara Falls? Yes, it is. 
that way about 45 minutes. I live very close to Niagara Falls. Can you tell us a little bit about beautiful places in Canada? So Niagara Falls is definitely a beautiful place in Canada. I love Niagara Falls um, because I grew up in this area. I have visited Niagara Falls a lot. Um, in fact, I had a friend from China, his name was Lao, uh, and he visited, now Lao, uh, and he visited and he went to, I went to Niagara Falls with him. It was super fun. So Niagara Falls is a great place to go in Ontario. Um, I'll mention two other places. One is Algonquin Park, which is in Northern Ontario, is a beautiful park. And if you're ever uh, out west, you can go to Banff. That is a really nice place as well. You should look those two places up. Banff and Algon Algonquin Park. I hope, I, I think I spelt Algonquin wrong. All of my Canadian friends are going to be annoyed with me. I think this is the right spelling. Uh, next question, Papi Chulo has no question, but Papi Chulo says, I'm glad you're back. Thank you. I'm glad that at least 200 people stuck around to watch this live lesson. Uh, technical difficulties. Um, I think some people just went to bed. Uh, that's fine though. Um, sometimes you need to get your sleep. Um, Zara, the Iranian says, hey teacher Bob, hey, um, could you please give an example using the words anybody, nobody, and everybody? So uh, you could say, um, let's say I had uh, a dozen cookies. I could say, does anybody want a cookie? Okay, so that would be asking, does any person in this room want a cookie? Does anybody want a cookie? If I was, if no one wanted a cookie, I could say nobody wanted a cookie, okay? Does anybody want a cookie? And if no one takes a cookie, I say, oh, nobody wanted a cookie. And then the last one is everybody. So if all the cookies were gone, I could say, it looks like everybody wanted a cookie. So hopefully that makes sense. I could say, does anybody want a cookie? And if no one takes them, I say, okay, nobody wanted a cookie. But if everyone takes one, uh, obviously everybody wanted a cookie. That's just a small example though. Uh, Zara, there are a lot of ways uh, to use those three words. Uh, Alex from Brazil has the next question, and that is about, oh yes, Alex says, would you explain what's the difference between thing and stuff? <laughs> so these are super common words in English to refer to almost everything, okay? So for instance, my son moved to university and he took all his things. He took all his stuff. Um, he forgot some of his stuff. He came home to get some of his things. He came home to get some of his stuff. So we use things and stuff and thing um, to refer to almost everything. Like I could say, Jen, I need to go to the grocery store and get some things. I could say, Jen, I need to go to the grocery store and get some stuff. Um, or um, I'll be home in a bit. I just need to um, grade some stuff. So it's a general noun to describe all kinds of things. So I have all my stuff set up to do a live stream. Um, I have my lights, I have my camera, I have my laptop, all of my stuff. I could also say, I have all, all of the things I need to do a live stream. So hopefully that made some sense, Alex. Um, I hope that uh, that helped you just a little bit. Let me clean up here, guys. Uh, let me delete some of the questions that I've already answered. Uh, Matt has the next question. And Matt says, can you explain how to use rather correctly? So the word rather... I'd rather not. See, I just, <laughs> I will. But um, when you use the word rather, you use it in sentences like that. Um, if I was to say, this tea is rather hot, it means the tea is quite hot. It's very hot. Um, but if I say, I'd rather not drink it, it's just another way of saying, I don't want to drink it. So rather is a a very useful word in English. It has a lot of different meanings depending on how you uh, use it in a sentence. Some of you would rather not see me drink tea during the live stream. So that would mean that you don't want to see me drink tea during the live stream. Oh, hi, Sean. Welcome back. Um, 
I'm just gonna say hi to Sean from Free99. Yes, we got it working. Um, the technical details, I moved the access point through a hole in the ceiling and moved it way closer to my camera and I rebooted everything. That means I turned everything off and I turned it back on again and everything seems to be working now. Uh, next question is from Hadim from Senegal. Um, Hadim says, hi Bob, good to see you again. <clears throat> hi Bob, good to see you again. Are there any specific ways to use when we want to teach a reading comprehension text? As a French speaking country, I used to teach English for kids. Um, that's interesting. Um, there's a couple strategies for reading. Um, one of the ways that I encourage reading is to read through whatever you're reading the first time without stopping, even if you don't understand it. Okay, so um, if I assign a French reading, and if you're doing an English reading, I recommend you just read the whole story or the whole chapter, even if you don't understand it, and then read it a second time and look up the words that you didn't understand, then practice those words until you know them and then read it a third time. So again, read it once without stopping, look up all the words you don't know, read it again once you know those words and then read it a third time. So, um, sorry, I think I explained that wrong. Read it once without stopping, read it a second time and look up every word you don't know. That takes a long time and practice them. Then read it a third time after that. That's a great strategy for reading, but some people find it boring uh, or tedious. Um, let's see here. Daniel, hi Daniel, how are you? I'm glad to see you again. Hey Bob, how are you? My question is, sometimes I get confused using the words truth and true. What is the difference? And, and you look different using black. Yeah, I'm wearing a, like a darker t-shirt today and I wore a black t-shirt yesterday in my uh, short video, I think. Um, so what you say is truth. <laughs> Sorry, that was totally wrong. What you say is true, or I could say what you say is the truth. Okay, so that's the slight difference there. If I say this tea is hot, what I'm saying is true. This tea is hot. Um, but I could also say I am speaking the truth. Okay, so we always, I think we always use the word the in front of the truth. You know, um, you need to say the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Um, but when something is true, it simply is uh, correct. I hope, I hope that made some sense. Um, if I was to say, you know, electricity makes this light work, um, what I am saying is true, and what I am saying is the truth. So use that as your basis for now. I think that's a good starting point. Um, let's see here. Uh, Maxime, or Maxim says, hello, Bob. Hi, Maxim. Uh, is the expression to put my head out of the window the same as to hang my head out of the window? Yes, if you're in a car, and you roll down the window and then you stick your head out of the window. Um, you can put your head out of the window. You can hang your head out of the window. I actually don't recommend any of those things because they're dangerous, um, but you could do all of those, okay? So Maxim, that's how that works. Uh, Zara says, uh, let me see here. Let me paste this in. Zara says, hello again. Is it correct to say I go to put my son to sleep Notice I changed it there. I go to put my son to sleep. You would probably though say, I'm going to put my son to bed or I'm going to put my son to sleep. Um, that would be the most correct way to say it. Most likely you would say, it's late. I'm going to put my son to bed. That would be the most common way to say that uh, in English. Um, I see a lot of questions in the chat. Uh, people, if you could follow the link from Todd and get the questions onto my list, I would be very happy to answer them. So make sure you are asking the questions using the link from Todd. Um, let me clean up my questions here. Um, oh, I'm not sure what I just did. As usual, I am messing things up more than I'm supposed to. Uh, next question is from Anmar. So Amar says... Hi, Bob, can you explain the expression, I have had it up to here? So let's say someone at work uh, keeps 
giving you more jobs to do and they're not working very hard and you are tired of it. You are annoyed with them. You would say, I have had it up to here. Okay, I've had it up to here with Joe. Joe doesn't do his work. Joe is always giving me work. I have had it up to here. I am fed up. That's another way to say it. I'm fed up. Um, it basically means that you are um, annoyed with that person. If you have had it up to here, I keep pointing here, right? Like I've had it up to here. I, um, I'm fed up. Um, I'm annoyed <laughs> with that person. Um, that's how I would say that one. Let's see here. Um, next question. Ali, let's get this posted in. Uh, Ali Morocco says, hi, Bob. Thank you a lot for all your efforts. No problem. Um, please, I have a problem with communication in English. Um, I have a baggage, but I don't know how to use it. So there is no solution, please. I'm not sure exactly what you mean by baggage. I'm not sure what word you're trying to use there. Um, but what I will say is, if you are having problems with speaking English and communicating in English, you simply need to keep practicing. Don't let a bad experience stop you from speaking English, okay? You have to keep at it. You have to keep speaking English to get better at speaking English. That's just the way it works. Please don't slow down. Um, please use the link to ask questions. Let me just put that in here. Uh, so many people are asking questions in the chat, but we need to make sure we use the link and keep things orderly. Um, the next question is from Zara. And the question is, what is the difference between beautiful and pretty? Thank you. Someone just asked me this question the other day, uh, but it was in French. They wanted to know the difference between jolie and belle. And in English, we have beautiful and pretty. Um, so beautiful is belle, pretty is jolie. And here's the difference. Um, when a woman is beautiful, um, it it's usually means that she's just very, very attractive. Um, she has beautiful eyes. Um, she just uh, looks gorgeous and we would say that that is a beautiful woman. When someone is cute, um, it's usually a younger person, like kids are cute. Sometimes your dog is cute. Um, cute is just, um, it's not exactly the same as beautiful uh, and pretty and cute are kind of, I think pretty is kind of in between. So cute is like kids and pets. Beautiful is like someone who just you know, they, they, they just grew up and they, they have beautiful hair, beautiful eyes. They just look beautiful. And then if someone's pretty, I don't want to say it's less than beautiful, but it, maybe it's a little like they're still really attractive. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not explaining this well, but they are slightly different in degree, I would say. Um, that would be my really bad description of pretty, cute, and beautiful. So sorry about that. Uh, let's see here. Um, Luis from Germany has the next question. Um, the other day you asked, how are you in the second restaurant? But on both sides, there was no real interest in an answer. Why do you ask if you don't want a real answer? It really is the same as just saying hi. So I could go in and say, hi, and someone says, hi. Um, and then if I say, uh, how are you? And the person just says, fine, how are you? It's really the same as saying hi again. It sounds rude, but in English, we don't really want to know how the person is. We're really just saying hi. So the sentence or the question, how are you, has become um, an informal greeting. Um, where we don't even really expect an answer ex other than good. You know, how are you? Good. How are you? Fine. Uh, could I get a small pizza or could I get um, a hamburger and fries? So it's especially in an informal situation like buying something at a restaurant. Um, it, it's, we don't really want to know how the person is. It sounds funny. I know. If I say to my sister, how are you? If I say it that way, I really mean it. But if I say, how are you? Fine, good. Um, can I borrow some sugar? So it's all in a little bit in the pronunciation. Um, anyways, uh, let's see here. Um, we're gonna go to Andre. Let's see here. 
Andre says, so we did a lesson on describing people yesterday, and Andre's question is kind of related. Um, Hi, Bob. Can I say a person is vulgar if such a person wears provocative clothes in church, for instance? Can we use vulgar for clothes? We don't often uh, do that. We would use provocative to describe the clothes, but we wouldn't say that someone dresses in a vulgar way. That, that doesn't make sense. Um, when you are vulgar, you're usually using bad language. Um, you're usually, um, uh, yeah, you're just doing rude things or mean things. So um, I'm just going to read something here for a sec. Um, yeah, Sean is mentioning too how in English, when we say, how are you, we don't really expect an answer. It, it's, it's a funny thing to have to learn, right? Because you're asking someone how they are and then you don't actually expect them um, or, or even care about the answer. But um, so here's how you ask someone in English how they're doing if you really want to know. So you would say, so how are you really doing? Like you would actually sit down and say, hey, I just wanted to, I just wanted to connect with you. How are you really doing? Let me know. Is, are things going good? Uh, so it's a difference in tone when you ask it. It's kind of a weird thing. English is weird. Um, so Jamila, I'm sorry, Jamila, I know it's late. Jamila Sinjanova says, Hi, Bob. I like listening to your live lessons, but it's too late for me. It's 1.30 a.m. here in the Czech Republic. Um, I hope you can watch this tomorrow. I know it's not as enjoyable to watch if, if it's not live, but... Uh, anyways, I hope that you have a good sleep over there in the Czech Republic, um, and I hope you have a good day tomorrow. Um, next one, let's see. Stephen from Vietnam says, Stephen from Vietnam, Hi, Bob. Could you please give an example uh, about the phrase, no sooner than, and is it popular in daily conversations? Yeah, so I feel like there's um, there's kind of two versions of this, right? Like, if someone's coming over, I could say, um, but don't, don't come any, don't come, I don't want you here any sooner than one o'clock. So I changed the phrase. Um, but when you say no sooner than, here's a great phrase. No sooner than, let's see here. No sooner than, oh, this is a hard one. I'm trying to think of a sentence about the live stream crashing. Um, like um, I had... No sooner, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to explain this one. It's not coming to me. My brain's not working as well as it should have. I'll come back to this. Um, I'll come back to this one, uh, Stephen. Sorry about that. Um, no sooner than I had started to answer it and I couldn't think of an answer. So that might help you a bit. Um, let's go to the next question from Urkon. Um, let's see here. Urkon says, when I talk with a native person, a native English speaker, I understand some sentences, and then after that, I can't understand everything that happens because it is complicated. How can I handle that? So generally what happens when you are talking to a native English speaker is they start with familiar words. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? That's good. And then they jump into the next level of the conversation, and it sounds like you don't have enough vocabulary to understand what they're saying, or they might be starting to speak really quickly after that. So um, the way to fix that is to A, ask them to slow down uh, and B, start to learn a little more about the secondary um, vocabulary. The other thing that might be happening is they are controlling the conversation more than you are. Um, if you're good at it, you can control the conversation uh, and you can have the conversation be on topics where you know the vocabulary. So I think that's what's happening there, uh, Erkin. I think that the person is very quickly um, getting out of your comfort zone. So let's see here. Um, Nahed says, Bob, Maharba means hi. Oh, Maharba, Nahed Maharba. Maharba means hi in Arabic, thank you. Um, I hate the two words, the two following words, whether and either. Help me know when to use them correctly. So it's hard to explain in a live stream uh, how to use each of those. So I'll give you an example. Um, first of all, I could say, I don't know whether I should answer this question or not. Um, so if I say, I don't know whether I should answer the question, I'm deciding if I want to answer the question. Uh, and then when we use either, um, 
I could follow up by saying, um, either I'm going to explain it too quickly and get it wrong, or I'm going to explain it so slowly that people get bored. So I know I didn't help you, but I did give you two uh, example sentences there. I hope that helps uh, a little bit. Um, let's see here. Um, the next question is from Rodrigo. I like this one. Rodrigo says, um, how can you ask this question, Bob? Did you forget to pay the internet bill? <laughs> Bob, have you forgotten to pay the internet bill? Sorry, this was just for fun. So first of all, no, uh, I did pay my internet bill and both your questions are correct. You could say, Bob, did you forget to pay the internet bill? Or you could say, Bob, have you forgotten to pay the internet bill? Both are correct. Um, grammatically correct and in English they are correct, but I did pay my internet bill and I paid my electricity bill too. So that's good. I wouldn't want to forget that. That would be a bad idea. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Um, Olivia, let's see what Olivia says. So Olivia, oh, Oliva says, hi, Bob. In English conversation, the word says and said, is it, ha does it have the same meaning? So um, not really. So if I say, you know, he says that you should pay your internet bill. Um, it means that uh, he maybe he said it yesterday, but he kind of says it all the time. It's what he believes. You know, he says that everyone should walk more. So it's a common thing this person says all the time. But if I said he said I should walk more, it means he it probably he said it yesterday. So if I say, you know, he says that people who use remote controls are lazy. I would basically, he believes that people who use remote controls are lazy. Um, and if I said he said that, it would mean he just said it in the past. So slightly different. One is ongoing um, and one uh, is in a definite uh, point in time. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the next question is from Hoi Vietnam says, tell me the differences between go to bed and get into bed. So very simply put, when you get into bed, you are physically putting your body into the bed. Like I'm going to get into bed now. And that would mean that you are, you know, you're literally laying down and putting your blankets on and your head on your pillow. But when you say that you are going to go to bed, it's a general term, meaning you're going to brush your teeth. You're going to use the bathroom. Um, you're just it's time to go to sleep, basically. You're saying that your evening is over. So um, let's see. Um, next question. I'm going to skip the next one. Sorry, it's a, it's, a, it's a tricky one to answer. But here's... Oh, I just clicked the wrong button. I better hit undo. That worked. Pratt has the next question. And Pratt says, How do I improve my vocabulary? Or how to improve vocabulary. Um, so I always suggest that people read. Um, that is one of the best ways to improve your vocabulary. Uh, read the news, read books, uh, read websites, um, watch YouTube videos and read the subtitles. Reading really helps you improve your vocabulary. Um, the second thing I would say is um, use some of the strategies available. Um, put post-it notes on things around your house write things out a lot. When you write things down, you remember them better. So, um, and you just spend time in the English language. Um, that's the most advice I can give. Just do things in English, listen to music in English uh, and all that. That is very, very helpful. Let's see here. Um, Romy has the next question. Romy says, hi, Bob. Thanks for the live, no problem. Um, can I use the verb use with the same meaning as wear, like use a t-shirt. No. Um, so I am wearing a t-shirt. I could, I could use my jacket to wipe off the table. So I could use it to wipe off the table, but I would never say that I am uh, using a jacket. Um, the only thing you might say is, you know, uh, I use a hat to keep my head warm. That, that, that kind of means the same thing or, you know, when I work outside, I use gloves to keep my hands warm, but 90% of the time you would say, I wear a hat or I wear gloves. So uh, let's see here. Um, next one, Saeed. 
it says, hi Saeed, by the way. Um, hey Bob, glad you're back. Uh, what do you recommend for learning basic math or a bit of everything in English? So math is considered the universal language. So hopefully you don't need a whole lot of work to learn the basics in math. But um, I'm, I don't have a lot of suggestions other than learn, you know, plus, minus, multiply, divide, equals, uh, fractions, percent. Um, should I do a live Friday morning lesson on math terms? Maybe I'll do that. That's what I'll do. I'll put it on the list. We'll do one of those sometime soon. Let's see here. Um, next one is from Pratyusha. Pratyusha says, even though I can understand English, I can't understand when I'm reading books. So it can be tricky if you choose books that are above your level or if you choose to read a book where it's not familiar to you. Um, the best thing to do in that situation is read a book you like in your own language and then read the same book again in English. That is a great tool uh, for expanding your vocabulary. So if you like um, The Hobbit, The Hobbit is a book by J.R.R. Tolkien. If you like The Hobbit, read The Hobbit in, in your own language and then read the book again, The Hobbit, read it in English. If you like, um, you know, a John Grisham book, read it in your own language then read it in English, and then watch the movie in English. That's just a great strategy all around. So uh, let's see here. I'll go to the next one. Let's see here. Uh, this is from, this, sorry, I clicked the wrong one. Let me clean up my questions here. I think I accidentally deleted one. Sorry. Uh, Jean-Luc says, is it correct to use no, it's an English lesson, an English lesson, an English lesson. So whenever a noun starts with, um, uh, or an English word starts with a, a vowel. So in this case, we have English, we have an English lesson. So we say it quickly though, like I say, welcome to this. This is going to be an English lesson, an English lesson. And I link the words together, right? An English lesson. Um, this is an English lesson that's great for listening practice. Um, a lot of you listen to this the next day, and I think that's great. Thank you very much. Um, I haven't paused, though, and said, if you're new here, please subscribe. If so, if you're new here, please subscribe. And if you haven't given me a thumbs up, give me a thumbs up. That would be great. I'm glad you all made it here to my indoor barn studio. Uh, the sheep, I can't hear the sheep or the goats, but there are sheep and goats over there. They're probably sleeping and wondering who's talking while they're trying to sleep. Um, let's see here. Um, next question. David has a question about Canada. How much is the... I think the question is, what is the standard of living in Canada and what's the most affordable place to live if you want to start fresh there? Best regards from Brazil. The northern part of Brazil, by the way. Um, I would say the best place to live in Canada is anywhere from Alberta to the East Coast, like Newfoundland or New Brunswick or Nova Scotia. Um, British Columbia is a great place to live, but it's very expensive. Cheese in British, British Columbia is a lot more expensive than in Ontario. Um, and I would, uh, I would probably say live in a smaller town. It's not as enjoyable as a big city. Toronto is expensive. Montreal is expensive. Uh, some of our bigger cities in Canada are very, very expensive. So if you can, uh, I would say move to uh, a province that uh, speaks the language you want to learn. If you want to learn English, move to Ontario or New Brunswick or Nova Scotia or PEI. If you want to learn French, move to Northern Ontario or New Brunswick or Quebec. Um, there are various French-speaking populations in Canada, but certainly live outside of the big city. Now, that might be difficult if you have a skill set that works better in the big city for a job, but that's what I would say. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to clean up the questions again. And what's the next one here? Car Carolina. Let me paste this one in. Carolina Gomez says, hey, Bob, I'm from Brazil and I'm new to your channel. Well, welcome to the channel, uh, Carolina. That's cool. Uh, can you give the meaning about the word through and please give some examples? So I teach English through YouTube. So you can use it there 
to indicate that you know my image goes through the internet so when something passes along wires or goes like that <laughs> goes through something i'm defining through with the word um when i make tea the hot water goes through my coffee maker. Yes, I use a coffee maker to make tea. It goes through the hose and into it. Um, I have um, garden hoses, and when I hook them up, the water goes through the hose. So there's some examples. I hope they made some sense to you. Um, let me just check here where I'm at. I have to hold up my hand here. Oh, there I can see. We got 20 minutes. Yeah, that's good. Um, Let's see here. Nickname says, or nickname, nickname. What is the difference between I didn't think about it and I haven't thought about it? Um, they're almost the same. Um, if someone says to me, did you buy a birthday present for your mom's birthday yet? I could say, I didn't think about it or I haven't thought about it. Um, so I could say, ah, I didn't even think about it yet. Um, or I haven't had the time to think about it. Or I haven't thought about it. So they mean the same, um, and you should generally think about what to get your mom for her birthday before uh, it's too late. Let's see here. I'm going to delete some duplicate questions that I answered earlier. Um, next question is from Vander, and it is, Hi Bob, how is it going? It's going good, thanks for asking. Could you explain the difference between their and theirs? I mean, correct, the correct way to use them, thanks a lot. So I, let's see, I went to my mom's, no wait, I went to my in-laws and ate their food. The food was theirs. That's the best example I can give, okay? So I went to my in-laws, I went to my father-in-law and mother-in-law's house and I ate their food, the food that belonged to them, their food, um, and the food was theirs, okay? So because there's two of them, I have to say the food was theirs. Um, if there was only one, I would say the food was his or the food was hers. So that's weird, isn't it? That we put the S on her. Sorry about that, English is weird. By the way, I asked this before, if I made a t-shirt that said English is weird, but I love it, uh, would you guys buy it? I don't know. Tell me in the chat. If I made a shirt, a t-shirt that said English is weird, but I love it, uh, would you buy that t-shirt? Um, I'm not trying to make money. I'm just asking if that would be a fun t-shirt uh, to wear. Let's see. Uh, Samwell has the next question. Samwell says, why don't we understand movies that have a lot of sentences? Um, so in movies, sometimes they speak very quickly. Uh, sometimes there's a lot of action. So your brain is seeing things happen as well as trying to understand what it is hearing. And that can be challenging, okay? So if the uh, dialogue, if the conversation is very, very fast, it can be challenging to understand an English movie. So um, I think that would be the best explanation for that. Let's see here. Zara says, um, thank you very much. You are amazing. Thank you. I, I'm just Bob. I'm, I, I'm glad you think I'm amazing. I'm just a guy. I'm a totally normal guy. Uh, God bless you and your family. I'm addicted to your videos. Every day on my way to work or returning back home, I listen to your videos. I think that's great. Um, I do like to tell people though, don't just watch my videos if you're learning English. You need to watch a lot of different people so that you uh, learn a lot of different accents. I appreciate it that you watch my videos. You, you should keep doing that, but you should also watch a lot of other ones. That would be great. Um, let's see here. Um, there are people saying nice things in the chat. Thank you very much. Um, what Wealth Thon says, thank you, Bob, for the great live. It's a great opportunity to improve English. I'm glad that you were able to listen. Let's see here. Uh, Helio Silva says, hello teacher, this is my first time uh, watching one of your live streams. Please send a hello to my sons. I'm gonna say the names wrong. Uh, Cake, Keika, and Juan. So uh, hello Keika and Juan. I'm sorry Keika, Cake, if I said your name wrong, it's, it's a tough one to pronounce, but hi, I hope you guys are doing good. Um, it sounds like you have uh, really nice parents, by the way. 
Uh, let's see here. Um, let's see. Uh, Mahid Quebec says, how do I say j'en ai assez? And, oh, yeah, I've had enough of it. Like, basically, I'm fed up. I've had enough. That's how you would say that in English. So, um, like, basically, I've just had enough of his behavior, and it's time for him to move, move along. <laughs> Let's see here. William asks about a pronunciation question. Um, let's see, how is the pronunciation for can't? Because it's similar to can. So I can say the word, I can say it, I can say the word, um, but sometimes um, there's words that I can't say. Like I don't like to say bad words, so I can't say them during the live stream. So can and can't. There is a t sound at the end of can't. So can and can't. Hopefully that helped a little bit. Um, let's see here. No news is good news. <laughs> so Carlos says, no news is good news, which is an English phrase that basically means, you know, if someone doesn't say anything about a situation, you know, no news is good news. But uh, Carlos is asking, why is it used in the singular? So when I read the news, um, we always say the news with an S. There's no new, you don't, uh, you know, so it, it's one of those, ver it's one of those nouns where um, I think it just, it, it, that's how you use it. So you say, um, in the news uh, today, there was uh, a couple of stories, um, no news, yeah, you just wouldn't say are, they are, yeah, you just don't, no news is good news, it's just the way it is, and Bob the Canadian can't think of a really good reason why right now, so we'll let that one go. Let's see here. Um, Kazi, this is a great question, Kazi, by the way. Kazi says, hi, Bob. I normally understand any lecture, but it's difficult for me to understand English movies. Um, what is my problem? So let's see here. Um, when you're listening to a lecture, there's a couple things happening. The person is speaking slowly. The person is speaking on one topic. Um, no one else is speaking. The person is the only person speaking. That's more than a couple. We're at three. So the person is speaking on one topic. They are speaking slowly and there is only one person speaking. Um, that makes it a lot easier to understand. When you watch a movie, there is a lot more going on. Usually there's two people talking and they're talking very quickly. Also, if you go to a lecture, you might already know a lot of the English words and phrases that you need to know to understand it, okay? So um, that's, that's what I would say. Um, next question, uh, Jose Andres says, do you know what thou means? So thou is a, is a very, very old word um, that we don't use anymore. I think it's in some really old um, like songs, like, you know, uh, but we don't use thou. Uh, it's been a long time since I have heard uh, the word thou. Um, it's, it's certainly an old English word. Um, it's a really old form of, I think, you, like thou. <laughs> Um, thou shalt not do that. Uh, you should not do that. So uh, let's see here. I'm not sure about this question, Muthafar. I, I see you've posted it a couple of times. How to speak anonymously. I want examples. I'm not sure what you mean about speaking anonymously. When you're anonymous in English, it means people don't know who you are. So I, I'm sorry, I don't quite understand the question. And that's why I haven't been answering it. So if you could find uh, a different way to ask it, I'll try and answer it um, for you. Let's see. Um, <coughs> excuse me. My throat's getting a little dry. Let me take a sip of tea. And let me have a look here. Nancy says, hi, Bob. It is terrific to be chatting with you. Thanks, Nancy. I appreciate that. Uh, my question is, what is the meaning of by all means? Could you be so kind as to provide some examples? Thank you. By all means, I can provide some examples. So it just means yes. Um, if I say by all means, I will provide some examples. I'm using it to say I will definitely give you some examples. Um, I don't know the exact history of the phrase by all means, but I will by all means go and look that up later. So 
hopefully that helps. Um, let's see here. Um, next question. Let's see. From David, can a non-native speaker teach ESL if he or she has an awesome accent and knowledge? Thanks. Um, yes, I teach French and I have a really bad accent. Um, you can definitely teach a, a language that you speak with a bit of an accent to other people. The important thing is to let them know that you have an accent. So I tell my students that I have um, a bit of an English accent uh, when I speak French. And I try to make sure my classroom that I use a lot of videos, that I use a lot of audio, uh, that I have a lot of other native French speakers um, in my room via technology so that they are hearing other people speak French. So if you are learning English or teaching English and you have an accent, it's totally fine. Just make sure your students know and make sure you bring via video or audio a lot of native English speakers into your classroom. Let's see here. Um, I'm going to try and do this one. Ahmed says, please explain literature vocabulary or limit the way to take literature vocabulary. And thank you, this is link and listen to order. I'm not quite sure, Ahmed. I'm having just a little bit of difficulty understanding the question. So sorry about that. Maybe ask again. Um, and, and maybe Sean or Todd will understand the question and can give you some tips. Um, let me clear this up. There are a few grammar questions in here that are too difficult for me to answer during a live stream. So I am deleting them. I'm sorry about that. Um, let's see here. Uh, Donna has the next question. Let me paste that in. Donna says, hi, teacher Bob. Hi. <laughs> How to improve my English speaking. I can totally understand most everything in English, but when I try to speak, I forget how to say the words. So practice, practice, practice. Uh, talk to the mirror. Talk while you're driving. Um, write little conversations and have conversations with yourself where you read both parts. Watch a lot of English reality television where people are talking to each other all the time. Um, but just practice, practice, practice your conversation. I, I know it's difficult. You get, you might get nervous. You might forget the words that you want to say. Um, the other thing I would recommend is ask the person you are speaking with to speak a little slower. Uh, they, they usually don't mind uh, and you will have a lot more success. Um, next question is from Alecleton. Alecleton. Hi. Do the words new and new have the same pronunciation? Yes. And no and no. Yes. So new and new. So new with a K and without are both new. Uh, and no and no are pronounced the same way as well. Yep. Um, totally pronounced the same. Let's see here. Um, Daniel says... Uh, as we can see, there's a lot of students following you. Yes. Have you ever thought to meet some of them? I don't know if it is a bad question. Um, I've thought about someday maybe having a meetup in a city like Toronto. The problem is that most of my students live all over the world. Um, so not a lot of them live in Toronto. Uh, so it would be hard to have a meetup. But certainly someday that would be interesting. Um, I'm not sure I have enough students on YouTube right now, but someday I might have um, a meetup, they call it, where you say, Bob the Canadian will be at this place. If you want to come and have a cup of coffee with him, uh, you could do that. Let's see here. Um, Micah. Micah says, hi, Bob. I would like to thank you. Your videos have helped me a lot. Thanks, Micah. I wish you every success. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I'm glad that I can help. Um, it is really fun for me to make these videos. So I am so thankful that you guys enjoy them. Uh, honestly, it is nice. I do make a little bit of money from the advertisements when you watch these videos. Um, it's not a whole lot, but for the most part, I just like making them. It's really fun to think, okay, today, I'm going to go to four restaurants and buy food uh, and I'm going to teach English while I'm there. And uh, um, I'm going to make another video for this Tuesday. And it's just fun for me to come up with ideas. So I'm very happy that you uh, all like my videos and watch my videos and you rewatch my videos. It's just, it's fun. So it's what we call in English a win-win. I like making them. 
You like watching them. So it's a win-win. We both win. No one loses. Um, let's see here. Sujaz. Sujai. <clears throat> I'm having trouble. I don't have my reading glasses. Sorry. Um, let's see here. Sujai. Yes. Um, hello, Bob. Sorry, I just found the link to send the questions. That's okay. Um, what is the difference on how to use aware and know? I often use aware of, oh, aware of, yes, um, as be careful though. So I am aware of a lot of things in life. I am aware of the fact that people watch my videos. I can also say I know that people watch my videos. So in that sense, they are the same thing. I am aware of uh, the fact that people have problems with their internet. Um, I know that people have problems with their internet. So that's the two. We do use aware of a lot though to refer to things to be careful of. You need to be aware of um, the animals at the zoo because you don't want to you know, stand too close to the cage. You need to be aware of the danger. So aware can be used to talk about things that are slightly uh, dangerous, but um, we can use them interchangeably. They do mean almost the same thing. Um, let's see here. Uh, Saeed, I hope I haven't been pronouncing your name wrong. Saeed, could you please say my name? Saeed and Saeed and said. I want to know how should I spell my name? Thank you. So I think the first one looks like Saeed to me. The second one looks like Saeed to me. And the third one looks like said. If you did S-A-I-D, an English person would say said. So hopefully that helps. Um, let me know which one you choose, by the way. I'd like to know. Um, let's see here. Uh, Samuel has the next question. Um, thanks, Bob, for all you offer to us. No problem. Um, what is the difference between quit, quiet, and quiet? So um, sometimes people have a job and then they quit. Okay? So they have a job and then they quit their job. That means they don't do the job anymore. Um, when they do that, it's quite rude. Okay, so I'm using quite to say that it's very rude. So when you quit your job, it's quite rude if you don't tell your boss two weeks before you quit. So it's quite rude. Um, and then, uh, well, quiet is just if I stop talking. It was kind of quiet there for a moment. So there was no sound. So quiet is the absence of sound. So hopefully that helped just a little bit. Let's see here. Um, I'm going to remove a couple of really hard grammar questions. I'm sorry about that. Um, let's see. Um, hi, Bob. This is from Trin. Hi, Bob. Uh, I want to practice English by going to the park to free talk or to talk freely with foreigners. Could you recommend some conversation topics to make them interested? So if you're thinking of talking to tourists, let me take a sip here. You will want to talk to them about their trip and if they have seen the things they should see in your city. So I think you're talking about tourists, people who are visiting your city. You would just say, hi, how are you? Are you, are you visiting my city? What country are you from? Uh, have you seen the tower? I, I'm not sure what the cool places in your city are. Um, so be ready if you're talking to tourists be ready to talk about your city because that's what they will be interested in. Uh, they'll want to know a little bit about the city that they are visiting. Also be ready to talk about your local food, your culture, and your traditions. You'll want to look those words up if you don't know what they mean, but those are great. Um, let's see. Oh, that's a great one. Counter Tenor says, I am aware of Jennifer Lopez, but I don't know her. That's a great that's a great example there. So when you're aware of someone, you know they exist, but it doesn't mean you know them. So let's see here. Um, let's see, Marcelo. Yeah, that's, uh, let me get back to the questions, everyone. I'm reading the chat too much right now. Uh, let's see here. Artur. Oh, I'm in the wrong spot here. There we go. Artur, hello, Bob. Could you recommend any web resources where I can practice my speaking of English? And I'm hello from the Ukraine. So I recommend preply.com. Uh, you will need to pay money, but you can hire someone on Preply. There's a link in the description as well, by the way, to help you speak English. You can do a lot of reading and writing and listening by yourself, but eventually you do need to hire a tutor. You need to pay money 
to practice your speaking. That is the, that, it's hard because it, it costs money, but it is a good way to practice your English. Claude Mir says, uh, are there many cow farms in Canada? Yes, there's one right down the road. I will maybe go visit it someday and make an, uh, a learn English video at that farm. We'll see. So um, maybe someday. I'm not sure. <laughs> hey, folks, there's a lot of questions and we are done. So I'm not going to be able to answer them all. I'm sorry about that. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, don't forget that if there were parts of this video you didn't understand, please watch it again tomorrow um, and watch the little 10 minute part that you didn't understand with subtitles turned on. Uh, I'm Bob the Canadian. I'm losing my voice a little bit, so we have to stop for that reason too. Please subscribe if you are new here by clicking the red button. You can click the bell too and you'll get notifications when I do a new lesson. Um, there will be a new video Tuesday. We'll do a live lesson next Friday and I'll be back next Saturday with another live stream. I will do a lot of testing before I go live though to make sure everything works. Um, I'm Bob the Canadian. I hope you have a really good uh, Saturday evening or if it is Sunday morning where you are, I hope you're having a really, really nice day. I'm gonna push the button to end the live lesson.